And at the beginning of a project, um, there's often this stage of, of um, feeling very much all over the place, like what should I paint, how should I paint, where should I paint, when should I paint. Uh, and even before painting, like what, how do you do your research? So a lot of it is involved with drawing. So it's very uncertain. Um, so I want to just really open up the difference between the Instagram persona of, of an artist. There's great artists who I admire, of course, on Instagram, and they just look perfect, and everything they do looks perfect. Whereas I want to really dispel that myth and show some of the realities of, of what it means to, to be in the studio day after day or, or even out on the field. So I'll take a tour. I have no idea what I'm going to show you. I'm just going to open up to you guys. These are just things that, that I have on the go. You can see that they're, they're all over the place. They're not curated. They're not of a theme. Just stuff going on. And, and all these paintings down here, just all in progress. Um, some been going on for years. Still lie. Some almost finished. Some a long way off. All these. All those. And many more. Uh, these are these are all planner studies, planner paintings stacked here. Sometimes I work from them to make bigger works. These are all works in progress, unfinished. Uh, we've had a bit of a leak here in the studio, so there's lots of buckets there. Um, but it's still the cheapest place around, so we stay here. These are the racks for drying paintings, little bits of things, but uh, as you can see, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Um, these are weighing down paintings on paper that are being stuck to boards. These are all things that are going to get painted over. Paintings I don't like, they're going to get painted over. Maybe keep that one. Didn't get finished because it started in a cafe and then the pandemic hit. Uh, this is just recently finished and um, framed and ready to go out to a customer. I enjoyed looking at that last night and thinking, here's a painting that has been a struggle all the, all the way through. And yet I kind of like it. I like some of the colors and it's not like a modern style or anything, but I think it's okay. Anyway, I'm sure that's enough for you, <clears throat> for you all. Thanks for listening. Just opening up about where I am right now. Hey folks, um, welcome to the studio again. Um, I've started to share stuff and some people liked it. Some people didn't, some people did. So for those of you who like it, here it is. Um, this is what I've been working on. When I'm starting a project, um, like a big long project, I get a sketchbook like this, a really cheap sketchbook, 99p from B&M. Um, and then I go through photographs on the computer and make a list with the folder number, the file number, and then just a note of, of what I find interesting about the photograph. And then, um, and then I just go through and draw them. And sometimes I do these exercises in, um, strictly timed so 50 drawings in two hours or something like that uh, these are just I just did I was just doing for myself um, so they're not about making good drawings by any means but they're about investigating ideas changing scale and viewpoints um, so these are old personal photographs just photographs of friends um, So most of these will not become paintings, but just one or two may become paintings. So they're not about trying to make good drawings, but about um, trying out possibilities. Anyway, so, so this, there's lots of those. So this is one of them. Um, I've been working on these at home. And I like the composition of this. And it's based on this photograph of a friend with their little son. Um, and I love the shaft of light, the shape of the, the light and shadow. 
And then the scale difference between the mother and son, and the fact that she's looking back to him. So it became this drawing, which is more invented, and it started to look like the lake where near where we live, and he invented diagonal lines in the top right, and I didn't know what those would be. And I decided it looked less like um, grass and more like the lake. So then today I worked on this little painting. It's just 10 by 14 inches. Um, putting the fire on the part knife. It's quite invented as a story. The little boy is wading through the water and the, the lady is surprisingly calm. But there's this sense of the, our children um, going through treacherous situations, but we have to trust that they'll get through or something like that. Um, <clears throat> actually, this is the second one. The first one is here which got painted over. Um, so often I'll do that, I'll just slam into a picture um, and then it gets stuck on it. So this was the second one I started when I calmed down a little bit. Um, you can still see the pencil line drawings. So I tried to keep it fresh. And then afterwards I worked over this one. I, I saw an artist, a Russian artist's work on Instagram. I'll put in the notes um, and he inspired me by this moonlight lit thing. This top one's not finished. Uh, it's just a, a base colours that I put on with my hands. So you may able to see my hands are covered in blue paint still. I can't get it off. Anyway, this is just a day in the studio. This is my palette, which is in a bit of chaos right now. But it's really satisfying just to paint. And actually painting is somehow more uh, fluid than drawing. Like with drawing, you're putting lines down and lines are either in the right place or the wrong place. But with, with paint, you can smudge it about and really let the paint do a lot of the work. Anyway, that's what I'm up to today. Hi folks, welcome to the studio again. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about drawing. Drawing is a different language to painting. And when I'm starting out a project as I am now, um, it's like getting back into a different language. If you If I was landed back in, in a country whose language I spoke in the past, but I needed to get fluent with it again. So um, I'm treating drawing as something, uh, trying not to treat it as an end in itself, but as a way to getting to imagery that um, is important or resonant. So as I shared before, I get these sketch pads, um, A3 size, so double A4, and, and go through all my folders and, and find photographs and write down the file numbers and then make little notes about what I, I like about each picture. So a uh, perfect warm to cool on child's coat. So it can be as simple as that or it can be in these ones here, uh, like this drawing. I like the whole photograph, the composition of it, the way the shapes are kind of tilted, the way the two figures are seen from a very low viewpoint. So I've just been developing it into um, acrylic studies and, and trying to make the shapes better. Same with this one. I like the overall cropped, I cropped the picture, but I like the overall composition. So I'm concentrating on that and, and trying out another version in acrylic. So sometimes it's the whole shapes that are interesting. Um, here it's the sort of psychological relationship between the two people, the guy and the girl, they're very close, but they're actually not paying attention to each other. So I've invented a space around them, a bit like Edward Hopper. And now I'm just beginning to expand that space because of the shape of the paper, I changed the format of the, of the composition. Um, some are much more kind of emotionally involved. So there's a photograph of the, uh, a bride playing the piano and I've invented this old man behind her in my mind imagining that it's his wife um, in her youth and so I'm trying to figure out how I represent the thoughts of this old man as he sees somebody playing the piano and it reminds him of his wife developing the setting of the old people's home where the people sat around and then um, a bit of a tonal study with the, 
the piano player here, the old man getting up and the, the setting with the TV set. So developing um, scribbles into trying to flesh them out into something. I don't know if they'll become anything or not. And then these other drawings here, again, just drawn from the initial initial photographs. Um, uh, I've started to develop those in various ways. Uh, these are piles of bigger drawings. These are ones that are based on Franz Klein and just trying to get exciting shapes in compositions. These are automatic drawings. So just trying to get the, the ink moving and um, not thinking about it, just making marks. Strange things come out like text because you're not you're not thinking about it. Just, uh, I don't know where that came from, but that's an automatic drawing. Um, so these are drawings that mostly aren't very good drawings. But I'm trying to get my hand moving on a bigger scale. I think that's not a bad drawing out of all these attempts. So that's what I've been up to. All those really trying to just unearth uh, interesting compositions, interesting emotional ideas, um, not really knowing where it's going, but this is the process at the beginning of a project with using drawing to, to excavate ideas. Bye for now. It's now a year till my show at uh, Contemporary Six Gallery in Manchester. Uh, a year might seem a long time, but I'm starting to feel the need to define the terms of the project and um, so I'm going to show you where I'm at right now. Um, so here's the wonder wall. Um, amongst many different drawing approaches, um, this is one thing I tried. I, I bought and really enjoyed reading Sunday newspapers and so I pulled out random pictures, not thinking about what, whether I would paint them or not, just images that had some interest for me, and then started to combine them into images. So this uh, protester is a reversed image of, of the lady on the left there. The, the man to the right is from a uh, a study from life, a life painting. Um, so I'm not questioning the images, just trying to think, find things that are emotionally resonant for me. So this is a, a little child being tended to by a mother. The mother figure is taken from this image. Uh, the child from this image. And then the background is, I don't know, seems like an image of dereliction. I find myself looking at disaster images. Um, then this photograph that I've had for probably I don't know, many years, 20 years maybe, just think it's an amazing image. So that, the, the soldiers became this. Um, the female figure is from, uh, from here. So that's the walking female figure. I re-envisage her as holding a baby. And this is a drawing from a sculpture in the Harris Museum in Preston, near where we are. Obviously from a few years ago, because it's oh, it's just reopened. Um, so things are pieced together from almost randomly. Um, this one up at the top right is just the beginnings of blocking um, from a drawing done down by the beach. This is the drawing, the steps. So these are all things I'm randomly interested in, but putting together a swimmer and a polar bear. Where that came from? I don't know, it came from here. So I put them together. And all these things have some sort of emotional meaning for me, but I'm not analyzing 
what it is, just putting them together. And if things recur, then, um, then I know they might just be important. I've organized a little bit, um, started to develop ideas. So this is a, a study based on this drawing. Um, I see her as kind of um, a heroine stroke villain. Maybe she started the fire and she's running away from it. I don't know. That is, is from, it's the same girl looking away at what she started. Um, so trying to flesh out ideas and pull them together. This is a studio I was working on yesterday of an old people's home. Um, this was the initial drawing of a girl playing the piano and the man thinking it's like his wife. These are some more drawings that I've included. This is a drawing from my foundation course so many years ago in an old people's home. Um, and combining it with drawings when my dad was in various old people's homes, I would do drawings of the residents. So I've, I've marked um, I've marked the sketchbooks with the pages that have drawings of people in old people's homes. So that's what I'm up to. Um, strange, mysterious uh, processes that I've never really done before, but at this stage, it's just opening up to any ideas and any, any imagery. Uh, that's the big aim is to find some imagery that is emotionally resonant for me. Uh, often I would just paint things that I see and I want to paint things that are emotionally a bit stronger. So wish me luck. Hi. Um, I've been putting this off because, um, I don't know what to share about my progress, but it's, uh, it's May it's, and this uh, project, which is due for exhibition next April. So we've been doing lots of drawings. Um, I want to show you where I'm up to. Come on a tour. So um, this is the most recent thing I've been working on just last week. This is Monday, so I'm just back in the studio. It's uh, three stages of man. Um, first youthful protester stage, and then um, the middle money-making stage, and then this is Dublin Dennis, an old Preston character. So he's the man in his old age. Again, somewhat poverty-stricken. Um, this I've got a photograph of a friend with, with two children um, and she's become like this heroic mother figure. Um, and in this drawing, I combined her with a, a photograph of a part of Manchester that's quite rough looking. And so she's emerging from the darkness. Um, in this one, I'm trying out combining her with an image of a man sat in a truck so that he's kind of the male uh, male figure in the in the scenario um, I've used that same image to create a Photoshop collage hopefully uh, improving the composition slightly. So these things, this is some of the images that are emerging. These drawings are based on a very famous photograph. I'll show you the photograph now. Of um, a, a bit of a tragedy really. A lady and a child falling from a broken fire escape. This happened in Boston, Massachusetts. But it's such a dynamic image that the angles of the of the bodies and of the railings and things it just affected me. So I looked into the whole story of it, and and what's so powerful is that the lady died it wasn't actually her mother. The child wasn't actually the child's mother, but the lady died, 
But she broke the fall for the child and the child survived. And that became a powerful thought for me. This is a drawing of Lindsay, my wife, with Lennox, our youngest, lying on her. She's like this securing image. I was thinking about that child landing on the mother. Um, but anyway, this developed this drawing of Lennox. I just started with Lennox asleep. So then I added the, the falling mother, as it were, and, and the suggestion of the legs of the child at the top. This is, I found um, photographs of some old paintings, and this is a photograph of an old painting just from a uh, newspaper of an actress. She looks so sad, so mournful that I had to paint her. And so I started to reinvestigate that image again. Um, so things are getting combined. Like this is another old painting of a mother struggling with children. So I've started to redraw that again. Unfortunately, I don't have the original photograph when you have a copy of it. This is, uh, this is a somewhat carefully measured drawing. These are the first drawings, are really bad proportions, but just, just looking at the image. Uh, this is the idea of a, um, a mother and then maybe some sort of oppressors around that she has to negotiate through. Um, so all these crazy images, this is images of construction workers. So from the male perspective now, what, what the men are up to. Um, and I have this idea of instead of them breaking up and moving blocks of concrete, that they'll be moving Lego blocks. I don't know why I feel that should be. This is a really crazy drawing. <laughs> Started with a drawing of my son held by my brother and then just replaced his head. Um, again, finding old paintings, these are photographs of old paintings, you realize that things that seem really current have actually been important to you for a long time. So I'm trying to um, completely revolutionize um, what I'm doing. And yet I'm really returning to, to themes inadvertently. This great letter from um, Sol LeWitt to Eva Hesse. Um, and she's got a kind of creative block and, and it's a really wonderful letter. It's read by Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, you can see it on YouTube. Um, she's talking about saying, what I'm doing is real nonsense. And he says, well, do more nonsense, do more crazy. Don't worry about being cool, just be uncool. Stop worrying about big, deep things, just do it, just do. Um, what you're doing seems really good. Now try something really bad. Try to do the worst thing you can. Um, it doesn't need to conform to any particular idea. Just do it. Just do it. Stop thinking and do it. But then he says, this is the part that really I feel applies to me. He says, I go through a similar process every so often. I have an agonizing reappraisal of my work and change everything as much as possible and hate everything I've done before and try to do something entirely different and better. So that's, that's how I feel like every couple of years, um, I just feel like completely dissatisfied with anything I've ever done and feel like I need to really tackle some big issue and, and really start all over again and start from the ground up. So that's, that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, what it feels like I'm doing anyway, but in, in, uh, in doing that, I'm actually finding again, themes that were important to me a long time ago, which is, is kind of reassuring. Um, one of the themes is couples. So this drawing is based on just photographs that have been, and then this is an old painting. So it's a very similar kind of thing, but I don't deliberately revisit stuff. It's just that they happen to be on a similar theme of these couples in spaces. So this was done, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago. Um, a little study of a couple in a domestic space, but not really interacting. And then I squash them together. So they're closer, almost like Walter Sickert. And here I'm trying out different tonal 
variations. Um, and then this is more recently, I extended the space on this side. And then this is a sort of semi-abstract composition based on this one to make it more dramatic. And, and I was thinking of, um, I don't know if you can find it now, but Dean Cornwell said this really fantastic thing about composition, that it's not simply about making nice shapes, but that, that it should be based on the story of what you're trying to tell. And so when I was doing this, I was, um, I was trying to say that they're connected, but disconnected. There's a kind of fracturing of the composition. And it really helped me because uh, composition is a big thing. And um, so that really helped me to see that composition can have a purpose. It's not just about making it look nice and organized, but it's about actually trying to convey the story through the composition. So that's a whole new challenge as well. Even, anyway, uh, there's other stuff to show you. Um, the last thing I'll show you today is uh, the development of this idea. The people in the old folks' home, here is, is uh, here they are. Here's the young girl playing the piano and the old man remembering his wife playing the piano and, and going towards her. And then uh, the, the setting of an old people's home based on, largely on memories of, of visiting my dad. Um, so there we are, that's what I'm up to. It's, it's crazy, it's disjointed, it's all over the place. Um, I've got a kind of deadline of the 21st of May. I had a chat with an artist friend and we kind of set ourselves goals. So this, this month was about just bringing in ideas, letting everything come in, and uh, then hopefully something will be made from it. Thank you. Hi. Norman here again. Uh, this is June 2021 and uh, I need to tell you where I'm up to with the Abracadabra exhibition. Um, so let's get right into it. So I did hundreds of drawings um, and then at some point I decided I need to get a little bit organized in my mind about which I was going to develop. So I put them in folders. Um, tried to put drawings into different categorized folders, heroic mothers, beach, um, construction workers, couples, and so on. Um, so I put them in folders, and the ones that came to the top, I decided to, to try and work on. And to help me in my mind, so that all these ideas weren't just flying around in the ether, this is a little sketchbook page of a really provisional idea of the whole exhibition with larger works and medium works and then small plenary works. Um, and then this is my selection board. So um, this is the whole thing. So every time I have an exhibition, I try and devise a way of getting an overview of all the works that might be included. And it's impossible because each of these thumbnails, as it were, is a painting in progress and it's in color and it changes and they're on different scales. And so you can't really get a true overview of the exhibition, but this helps, this helps. I can come in there and say, think, what have I not worked on and what have I not developed? And also they're in categories, which is kind of helpful. So, for instance, this uh, Heroic Mothers, this is the last drawing. And now I'm letting myself loose a bit on some paint. So this is um, the development of that idea. Just not worrying about colour yet, because that's, uh, colours takes a lot of thought. And at this stage I start to incorporate older works too. I look through things that might fit in with the current themes. So this is a painting I started maybe five years ago. And these are little ones that did um, trying out different textures on my course using the same imagery. And because 
this theme of the girl in the city and the somewhat oppressive male presence of these men in suits, well, it fits in with some of the stuff that I've been looking at lately. Like, um, this is an image I've been developing in Photoshop. Uh, so I included the man behind her and then a man in front of her and then making the man bigger. Um, and then here I'm, I'm drawing from that, making the man on the left even more um, imposing and maybe a diagonal of an umbrella sort of slicing through her and this man really close. And, and so I'm trying to get a feeling of the vulnerability of a female presence in the city. So this is including um, previous works. So also, uh, so this painting here, I really just wanted to get painting. That's one of the things I wanted to do. So this is a, a real bit of fun color. It's developed from, if I just go, excuse me. Here we go. So this is developed from photographs that took a long time ago and putting a few together. It doesn't matter if they don't match up perfectly. Just slamming a few photographs together in Photoshop and making a composition out of it and then simply gridding it up and um, develop it into a painting. So it, it's on that theme of constriction work. So it was allowed that I just make a, a quick painting because it's on the same theme. Um, but really the more figurative aspects of this theme are developed here. So again, using Photoshop to put various figures together. For me, it has meanings of, um, well, you know how ladies get together and talk about personal problems and private issues and delicate things. Well, men have a diff difficulty doing that. So this is, um, trying to bring these masculine construction workers into a sort of intimate scenario. Um, so another theme that I'm beginning to reintroduce is the beach, um, the psychology of figures on the beach. This reminds me of Degas painting young Spartan boys and girls exercising. So it's very much about a male and female relationship. Um, there's a gentleman there with a mobile phone taking a picture of a girl. So it's about the psychology of that and another version, um, which is all these males, the young boy and the, the man on the left and the right are, are looking towards the mother and child figure in the center um, who's arriving on the scene. Um, there's another beach theme developed from this drawing to this little study of the family, the mother and children walking along and then just recently on the same scale as the previous paintings, this man looking at them. So he's the observer. He's like the male who may be connected to them or may not. He may be the father or he may be just somebody looking at them. I don't know why, but that's the sort of psychological stuff that I find interesting. Um, so, oh yeah, so this is um, some of the heroic mother's theme. And this shows technically some of the progress of paintings from an acrylic underpainting and then the outlines redefined in oil, just thin oil to do the drawing, and then developed more in color and reworked. So, um, so these are on the theme of the heroic mother. And another big theme I'm starting to think about working on again is um, something I started when I was working with Zoe Frank in her workshop, which is um, a, a battle painting of, of my boys in the garden. So these are drawings from photographs of them reenacting battles in the garden during lockdown. Um, 
They love to fight, and it's always a mystery to me uh, why they would want to fight each other. It doesn't really make any sense, but I've got to reconcile the fact that that's part of what boys do. So from these, I started to put together ideas of composition of a triptych. Um, and then these are on tracing paper and different variations on the composition. And then I did a bigger version and these are just in acrylic. And then this is where I'm up to so far with um, very small color ideas. So hopefully this theme will get integrated into all the other stuff and it will make some sort of not coherent whole. It won't be a coherent whole, but I'm not really interested in that. I'm interested in doing the best paintings I can individually, but it's really helpful to work in series. It sort of gives a validity. If, if an idea has come back to you and back to you and back to you three times, even if it seems a crazy idea and you're reluctant to explore it, if it's come back three times, then you can assume it's, it's pretty important. Um, so that's where I'm up to. I don't feel like I've made massive progress, to be honest. I've been doing all sorts of other stuff, plein air painting and juggling galleries and things, but um, hopefully it'll be more progress next time. Thank you. Hello again, it's Norman. Um, so the progress on the project. This is uh, June 12th. Um, this is just a quick one. Um, to comment on the way a project doesn't follow a logical pattern. So at the close of the last instalment, um, I showed you this, which is, I forgot what I called it, but it's um, an ideas board, the plan of the exhibition. Okay, so there it is, with all the little thumbnails of particular paintings really nicely planned out. So you would think that having done this, I would then just proceed for the next year or so to to do those paintings. And why wouldn't you? Well, because of temperament. Um, once I'd planned that out, the day after I'd posted my video, I had revolt in myself. I really didn't want to work on any of that at all. So I see this is some of the things I started to work back into, sanding back these crowd paintings um, with a big mechanical sander. Um, these are, of course, and, and reworking this one um, drastically. So it's, these are works that are more instinctual. So they're not so much about ideas. These are very much ideas. They take a lot of thought to do all those drawings that was doing the very much conscious thought and ideas. Whereas working on these is much more instinctual about color and just losing yourself in the paintings, maybe putting some music on and um, thinking about the marks and then stepping back and the abstraction of the paintings. So I got involved in those and who knows if they'll go in the show or not because they're not the same idea, but they might work in the show. Um, I also got involved in this, um, Remind ourselves that this is a painting I did a long time ago. This is the original newspaper photographs um, of the actress. But it seemed to me to be an expression of, of sorrow. And I was interested in that idea of a portrait as a painting of an emotion. Um, so these are two versions very much in progress. Um, of that. I'm trying to rework the paint, scrape it back, and as you can see, they're quite different palette. Um, so having two versions allows me to go in different directions. With regards to this one, which we've seen in previous episodes, um, I went to Manchester and, well, the initial background is based on photographs. And I found in the photographs, it's near the Thirsty Scholar, which is a, a old pub in Manchester. I really like this dingy atmospheric place. So this is painted on site uh, to feed that painting. Um, this is one you've probably not seen before. And 
it is connected in some ways to the beach scenes. These figures are based on a photograph, but they change drastically. The angle of the legs, the child, and all, all sorts. But I like it as a family group, it's family dynamic. Um, I don't know what it says. I haven't got a particular idea for what it says, but anyway, this is one I've been developing, one of the construction workers, just developing it in color. And this is one you may not have seen before. I know the construction workers beginning. So that's where I'm up to. So as I said, the ones I've been actively working on, <laughs> like these and the crowd spend things, are not in that initial plan. Um, to me, it doesn't matter that much what I'm working on, so long as I'm working. Um, Chuck Close, the artist, said, inspiration is for amateurs. Like if you're a professional, you just get to work. And he loved the idea of knowing that in two weeks time, he'd be working on, you know, this section of the painting down here. And the day after he'd be working on this section down here. That sort of regimented production just leaves me cold and I just can't work. I very much admire it, but I just don't work like that at all. Um, so I'm very much according to mood, um, and I've, I've realized this from experience, like one of my previous projects was to do large paintings. And as soon as I set myself that project, I would wow, big leap forward and start these big things. And then I'd be like, I just don't want to work on them. I'm not interested in doing that. I don't feel confident. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'd try and force myself to work on the project and it just didn't work. I know now that if I have a big project, it's something that I've set myself and I'm interested in and I will come back to it. So not to worry about it, just work on whatever you feel like working on and those themes will come back, whatever that project is. So that's where we're up to. Thanks. So this is an additional um, little word. First of all, I got the dates wrong. It wasn't June, it was July 13th or so. Uh, now it's July 29th, so um, amongst all this chaos, I don't even know what month it is. Uh, I want to show you a little bit more this month, before the month's over, of some of the many things that are going on. And you'll get an idea of just how jumpy it all seems. Um, but somebody described it um, as a really great podcast called Art Juice, and one of the people on that described it as being like a flower. So you have the, the center of the flower, the center of the daisy, and then the petals all around. And I go off in all sorts of different areas of interest and styles and subjects, but it always comes back to me and I'm at the center. So I don't need to worry about these little journeys. I can just enjoy them and then it'll always come back to my style in the end. Um, so I'll show you a little bit more of what I've been up to. So we'll start with these. Uh, these are easy to show. These are plein air paintings of Manchester uh, that are in the racks and have not been worked on for ages. But the reason I'm showing you is that I did work on this one just the other day. In fact, I had some videos of being stood on that spot in Mosley Street. And the videos I found really helpful to work from rather than the photographs. Um, so hopefully some of these might go in the show. Um, so if nothing else sells, Maybe some of them will. Um, this piece, um, I have a Zoom meeting with some people about spirituality and art. And after the meeting, um, this image seemed significant. I'd done a drawing from it, just turning the page and doing some of the people, and turning the page again and drawing another person, and turning the page again and drawing another person. And it seemed like we're all in this sit down by james is a great song we're all in this situation together just lumped in this um holding pattern delayed at the airport so that's as far as i got with that um i worked a little more on this one of the construction guys and introduced the hose coming down and the hose down there 
This was a quick one while I had my son Jasper here. I worked on the painting of the boys and I started to order some massive canvases to do that. And then I thought, you know what? I might just actually put that on the back burner. Otherwise I'm never gonna finish any of these other things. Um, all right, this was a little bit of a journey. Um, something I started before. It's based on this photograph. And it seemed like there was a relationship of sort of envy or jealousy between these two um, athletes. So I started that, I swapped one of them around to face the other way, and I started this acrylic painting. But I was, I was also interested in this uh, Victorian or Edwardian costume. And just because those photographs were next to each other on my ideas board, and so I started to research a little bit about images of people in that costume and doing really bad Photoshop. You know, it's terrible, just slapping a head on top of a body. Um, anyway, came out with th this kind of thing. Um, so heads superimposed on different bodies, but in a relationship that... Uh, hopefully begins to imply some sort of tension between the two ladies. One who's getting attention, the light is flowing onto her and one who's in the shadowed background. Um, whether any I'll do anything with that, I don't know. And in a similar vein, technically quite different, but in terms of imagery, it's also two women, but these are friends one in light clothing, one in dark clothing. But I just love the shapes that are created, uh, the positive and negative shapes. So I started to work this on top of abstract splodges of color of leftover paint. Um, I also found these, these were at home, I forgot about them, trying to develop a, a tension of relationship between the male and female. I've always, it seems really obvious, but I always find it really fascinating, the, the bulk of a man's shape against the delicacy and slenderness of a woman's shape. That's, it's just both emotionally and um, technically very interesting to me. Is there anything else? Uh, I don't know, I don't think so. I think that's it. Um, so, that's what we're up to. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Hi, it's Norman. It's the 4th of October, so July, August, September, October. So it's like almost three months later since the last episode. Um, and all sorts of stuff has been going on, but not very much of the project as we know it. So things that I've been doing are things like... Uh, a Northern Boys trip to London. Um, uh, that was a, a solid week of of painting. Um, and one innovation was these, for me, larger works to, to work on on site, 20 by 16, these two. Um, and these are two ongoing Manchester ones. St. Peter's Square, that have been worked and reworked and reworked, Got going back to the site so many times, and just the kind of searching for a surface and an abstract resolution. So things get changed. So if you notice um, in the top one, the big library building on the left, and then the lower one, it's completely missing the whole side of it. Um, I'm just searching for something and I don't know what I'm searching for. Um, these are other Manchester ones I've been working on, on and off. Um, the, this one may be finished. I started this uh, a couple of years ago on site and finished it recently. This is a quick one that started and, and the one on the left has started as a demo for an art society. Uh, so those two still need lots of work. Um, uh, what else? Oh, a minor, minor matter of uh, 
an, a solo exhibition with 57 paintings in it, which is a mixture of um, new works and also some some previous work mixed in. I got, did get a chance to do this one, which I, I quite like in the sense that it's got a hint of some narrative uh, relationship between the males and females and the glances that are passed between them. Um, but apart from that, I've not really made a lot of project, progress on the the big project, abracadabra, imaginative figure paintings. Um, so to get back into those things is, is challenging. It takes time. I come and look at stuff like this in the studio and think, where was I and where did this come from? And what technical questions was I thinking of? And um, the first marks that I make on it, again, as I try and revisit them, will probably make them worse rather than better to start with. Um, and still have, you know, all these hidden explorations. Um, oh, these are, these are older paintings. Um, so there's just all this stuff to be painted over. Or who knows what is in here? It's a mystery to me. So the whole process is kind of unorganized and the only central combining factor is me, that I'm doing it all. So. gonna it's gonna all hold together hopefully because it's me that's doing it all so this is me trying to begin to reconnect with all these works in progress um, I might do some drawings anything anything just messing about with paint doing some drawings from them looking again at the reference material, whatever it takes to get reconnected to those things. So that's where I'm at. Hi, it's Norman. Um, we're in November. I think we're on the 12th. Um, so there's been various things aside from this project, but we're trying to get back into it. I had a week doing a workshop with the great Nicholas Uribe. Um, and when I got back into the studio, I had a couple of days working solidly, well, a week working on some stuff, and then a couple of days where I got in here early, sort of 8 o'clock, 8.30, and worked all day, and I was just trying to, like that guy, trying to push the ball up a hill. It just wasn't working. It felt like work, and I was forcing myself to do it. So I've had a rehang, as in bringing all the things that relate to this project, abracadabra, more imaginative paintings, all the things that relate to that, and, and it's become much looser. Anyway, the best thing is just to show you, I've made like a little temporary exhibition, so I'd like to get your comments on that. That would be, that would be really helpful. Um, so here we are. Um, this end wall, as you can see, I've tried to group paintings according to a theme. Um, one of the two smallest ones or two small paintings are finished all the rest are very much in progress um, a couple of crowds that still still need work um, and one on the same scale I'll try not to say too much about these but I'd love your comments um, suggestions anything you like it comes to the stage in a project where you you do need some feedback. It's like the critique at at uh, at an art school, you know, where you show your work in progress, and um, and it's just helpful to get a sense of direction again.
So some of these paintings are things that I started a long time ago and, and I'm thinking of working back into if they relate to what I'm working on now. Um, and some of them are new ideas, trying to push, like these ones are mothers. These are on the new theme of the mother and child, the heroic mother. and parents struggling with children. I wonder why I'm painting that. Um, and then boys fighting. <laughs> wonder why I'm painting that. construction series which I thought was bigger but there's just three in it so far so as usual there's not one theme in this body of work but numerous themes like the couples here's the couples um, and that's it. So I'd just like to leave you with that little tour. And as I say, I'd love any comments or feedback of what, about what you feel the paintings are saying. That would be really helpful for me to get an opinion on. Um, anything about them technically that seems perhaps different from previous work or... Uh, I don't know, just comments to, please, please be relatively kind. Construction, constructive criticism is good, but we're all vulnerable too. Um, so a little bit of both would be fine. Thank you. Hi folks, here's the Abracadabra update. It's the 22nd of December. We're here at, uh, in, at home, in the home studio, um, with COVID in the house. So we're trying to look after each other. And in between that, um, trying to do is work on a few little things. So this is where we find ourselves um, in the little studio at home. And uh, as you can see, I'm working on small things using the kid's easel on the table. Um, this one at an early stage was just black and brown and ochre and white as a palette. And it was quite... Um, well, harmonized, but I've now expanded the color and made the male figure, the father figure, more specific. And perhaps these are too similar now in color, proximity, and there's lots of work that needs doing. Paintings go through these stages of, of getting worse, more complex, and hopefully this needs simplifying now. So, uh, yeah, I, w I was enjoyed painting this one. This one came together pretty quickly, quite inventively. Things happened with the paint that suggested things like the suggestion of, of light um, hitting the top part of this figure to provide a connection to the light hitting the female figure. Um, she's supposed to be, in my view, carrying a child, which I had to sort of invent. And the army figures are based on these, but they're not very literal. You know, this figure is almost entirely invented. Uh, so uh, anyway, I'm, I'm on stage now where I'm starting to think about color. Like I've done lots of drawings and monochrome things and I'm starting to think about color. This was another one that I quite enjoyed it's painted over an old painting and so it's got that textural surface in parts uh obviously about the relationship between the the two um these are from venice this couple 
and I'm thinking quite a lot about shape design and trying to work on that. Did a workshop with Nicholas Uribe and um, he, he turned me on to the work of American illustrators like Saul Pepper, Mead Schaefer, these guys. They really work out the tonal and color design of the pictures. Oh, so, so these are a couple of oil sketchbook ideas for that painting that you just saw. Um, what else have we got? Uh, oh, this is like a, a drawing from from a newspaper photograph. I try not to question too much why these images appeal to me. Maybe not appeal to me is the right word, but why I find them compelling. That's a better word. Um, anyway, those are a few things that we've been up to. Obviously, mostly small works and. Just trying to make a, a few steps forward. Thanks. Bye. Happy New Year 2022. Back in the studio. This is the first day uh, where I'm back in the studio and I've been working at home on smaller things and it's good to be back in here. Um, so I'm looking around and I'm I'm seeing some of the, the bigger things that have been ongoing and um having got them out last year towards the end of last year and and looked at them and tried to get some feedback and and get going on them again uh i'm feeling today that i need to to hide them away mostly and just get one brush stroke done on one of the paintings it's like the monday morning feeling um, it's like you're starting from cold and it is cold in here um, so it's almost lunch time and my aim before I go for lunch is to do one brush stroke first of all I've selected a picture I've put it on the easel and I have no idea what that brush stroke will be so there's things I need to do I need to get paint on the palette I need to get the imagery on the screen um, I need to get, there's probably other things like brushes in the right place, uh, a coffee probably. I love what Jenny Savile says, I start the day with a coffee on the palette. Coffee on the palette, I like that. Um, so it's time for getting going. I mean, some of these things need to be hidden away because as I look at this wall here, these are Edinburgh paintings. And um, so what you look at affects your heart. Uh, that's what I think of. And so sometimes we get confused because we're looking at too many things. So I, yeah, as I said, I need to hide some things away and just concentrate on that one brush stroke and work from that. Okay, see you soon. Hi, welcome back. Uh, it's January 26th. Um, I wanted to just share progress. The deadline is May, and when you take away time for thick paint to dry, varnishing, photographing, framing, you're taking away a month minimum, two months realistically. Um, I'll start to have a show, show you around some things. Um, I've just put this back up. It's a uh, 48 by 40 inch thing that I blocked in long a few years ago and oh look I signed it because I kind of like it as it is but it feels unsubstantial in the surface um, so it's just very thinly washed in so um, last night yesterday I was working on these smaller studies um, I think these might be done or almost done. The surface is developed. I started these for my class, my online class about the painted surface and I really got carried away with the surface itself. Um, so also yesterday I was doing these boards using leftover paint 
to cover boards, having fun with the abstract patterns. And there's more canvases like that up there. I really don't know what I'm going to do with those, but um, they're fun to do. There's a, there is a kind of uh, momentum of finishing work. So I think this is finished. And it's comforting to have a few finished things in the bag, just for my blood pressure. Um, uh, and there is a kind of momentum. Pieces that have been hanging around for ages, um, and you wonder if they'll where they'll ever go. Sometimes they half an hour and they're done. It's strange. Anyway, this is quite a different piece. This is one that I worked on for three days, pretty solidly, after the underpainting, um, to try and resolve it and let the let the marks really be wet in wet. Whereas this is more of a scumbled surface. Um, this the smaller study you've probably seen before for that. And I was working on this one too. Um, this one has got a bit sort of more realistic, more detailed. You never know what, where they're going to go. Some, as I say, just resolve themselves quite quickly. Others just keep going and going. Like this one, keep going and going. This has been on the go for years. There's a video on YouTube of the progress of this, and I started reworking it again. Um, the surface on this has got really clogged and uh, really great scumbles, but the the overall bones of the composition, the resolution of the colour is still still not quite there. It's it's a strange one. Here's another. One on the same scale I was working on recently. Um, and because I've not invested as much time in it, it was kind of easier to make bolder changes. And that's always a safer bet, is to make bold changes rather than tentative ones. So, so that's what I've been... There's maybe a few pieces at, at home that are getting there as well. There's a lot of work to do. Excuse me, that's just the fire alarm. Um, so, that's where we're up to. Hello. We are here in a secret location to have a preview of the work for my exhibition, which is probably not going to be called Abracadabra anymore. It's probably going to be called Emergence or something else. Anyway. What I've done is I've sneaked into this spare unit in the mill where my studio is and laid things out around the perimeter. It's so surprising when you see your work in a different space. In a bigger space, for one thing, it makes the work look very small and also you can start to put things next to each other that you didn't even knew went with each other. Um, so, and also one of the main reasons for doing this is to once again try and lower my blood pressure by checking do I actually have enough paintings. And I do, because I forget about paintings. In fact, I've got a number of paintings at home, at least two that are finished. So I think everything's going to be all right. Um, but I will confess to kind of a disappointment in that I've been trying to develop beyond painting individual figures or couples, you know, so, so these are Vertical single figures or double figures. Um, and I've been trying to look for more imaginative imagery, as, as in maybe these ones. Um, and I realised that that 
endeavor is still in its infancy. Um, there's still the, well, a lot of these works were, were started a long time ago and only just finished recently. So the structure of the paintings is, is of single or double figures, but in the larger works, they're getting broken into more these abstract shapes, which is cool. Um, but you know, say this, for instance, was started from life, painted from life. And it's difficult when painting from life, I find, unless you've got a long time, to start creating a, a narrative or something very dynamic. Um, this one's a bit different for me, and I think and I, and I enjoy that because it's uh, it's just different imagery, really. Maybe wakes us up a little bit. Anyway, so <clears throat> this w is not the final show. This is not the final selection, but it's just a stopgap with about a month to go. After about a month, after four weeks, I've got, and then no more painting for this show. Anything that's finished is possibly going in. Anything that's not finished is definitely not going in. Okay, thanks for listening.